I wanted to make something clear. But the problem is that typical 3D prints, even if you use clear filament, just come out milky white instead of being properly clear. They diffract light too much, so while light still passes through, it gets bounced around inside the part and scatters, which creates that translucent but not quite transparent look. But Colorfab have had this article online for a while where they are showing off incredibly impressively clear prints. I've done a lot of printing and I think I'm ready to show you how to reproduce those prints yourself. Okay, let's see. Colorfab are using their HT filament for this, which is Eastman Triton. So I believe it's the same material that Tallman used to make, just plainly called Triton 2. But the key here is that it's a copolyester, so a material that is closely related to the common PET and PETG filaments. In general, those are plastics that like to fuse together extremely well, so they turn into one solid piece of material instead of keeping those layer lines throughout the part. I do have the Colorfab HT filament here, but I wanted to see just how well a standard PETG would do, so I did all my experiments with the inexpensive dust filament PETG. But I'm sure any other clear polyester filament is going to work basically the same for this. I had two different use cases here, the first one being these solid parts like Colorfab showed that just look like they are one single solid block with basically invisible layer lines on the inside and outside, at least that was the goal. The other one being these clear vase-like structures that have no infill but only provide a shell, in my case, to scatter light. I was specifically looking into this for use as diffusers for lamps of various types and I think I pretty much achieved that. But let's start with the solid parts. My test subject here is a spur gear from Daniel Nore's OpenRC F1 design. It's got some relatively complex surfaces on the side, large flat areas on the top and bottom, and this hub that is a bit of a smaller element where you'll be able to see light shine through from the top and from the sides. I know it's not the most realistic design for something that's supposed to look good, but I think it's a great object to tune in the process. Plus, I've now clearly got plenty of spares for when I start building my first OpenRC models. I'll probably reprint these from ABS or Tallman 910 though. So the first print was done with settings that I thought would make sense. I used 300 and 350 micron layers, 100% infill and regular temperatures. But if you look at the part printed with those settings, it's translucent, but it's not transparent. Yes, you can take a flashlight and shine it through and the part will glow, but it's not nearly as transparent as the samples Colorfab showed. So the first idea was to increase flow and that worked to a certain extent uh, to close what looked like these tiny gaps between the extrusion lines. So I upped the extrusion rate to 105% first and seeing that that improved things a bit, I tried again at 110%. And if you compare the original part at 100% flow and the new one at 110%, it's already a lot more transparent, but we can also see that it's starting to show over extrusion streaking on the top surface. So at this point, the amount of material seems like it's correctly filling every gap more or less, but the rest of the print settings could still use a bit of work. So I tried the other extreme going with 50 micron layers and that immediately helped a lot. I think because the, the hot end now passes over the same spots more often and sort of irons down the tracks more, we're fusing the individual extrusion lines together more tightly to turn them into an actual single block of material. In fact, if you look at this hub part that I accidentally broke in half, you can see that both the surface where it broke and the inside of the part look like one single piece of PTG. Looking at just the crack, you'd be hard pressed to tell this thing was 3D printed at all. So next up, I tried increasing the material flow on the 50 micron prints and increasing the layer height from 50 micron to 100 micron. And both improved transparency a bit, at least that's what I believed. The 100 micron print was done with more perimeters, so you can see how those scatter light differently than the solid crisscross infill. But overall, it didn't look that different from the 50 micron prints, other than that the top surface is now a bit less smooth and looks like it was a bit over extruded. The 50 micron prints with more material I think were the best ones of the entire series, where the one with the total of 15% extra material looks I think extremely good, while the one with 20% extra is a bit too much and started to get quite messy on the top and side. It also has these fuzzies between the gear teeth where the nozzle was scraping off the extra material on each layer. 
For some reason, at the time I thought 100 micron prints were just as good as the 50 micron ones, so I kept on printing parts with that setting. Looking back, I probably should have stuck with 50 micron. Anyways, these two benches were printed with 110% flow rate, but this one got a bit of a temperature boost, hoping that would help with everything fusing together. But instead, it turned out that the higher temperature actually decreased the clarity of the part and had a few other negative effects on quality. It's a bit easy to see what's happening when you look at the gears that use different temperatures. And you can see that with a higher temperature, PTG actually sort of starts cooking and bubbling, and we'll see that effect again in a second. In the main section of the gears, the high temperature is fine and slightly improves clarity, but up here at the hub where the printer slows down so that it doesn't pump too much molten plastic onto one spot in too short of a time, up here you can see the plastic getting extremely cloudy. That's because when the printer slows down, the filament is sitting in the heated zone of the hot end longer and gets more time to heat up, cook and degrade. So to avoid that, in your slicer, either disable the cooling slowdown or just print at a lower temperature overall. It's not that much of a difference. I think this Benchy looks really good overall and shows off the transparency or translucency really well. It's the most visible when you look at the bottom or top of the part, since it's almost like the low layer height makes the side surfaces somewhat milky. Maybe I should try that with an even lower layer height at some point, uh, 10 micron or something, but I'm pretty sure the Prusa i3 Mark II that I used for all these prints is not up for that without dropping in a new extruder and some lower pitch Z-axis spindles because the stock setup has a physical resolution of 20 micron considering that the half step position of your stepper motors is the only micro stepping angle that you can really trust. But let's get back to these parts. I also tried to improve the surface by either flame polishing with a hot air gun set to 600 degrees or sanding it beforehand. But with the hot air gun, the spinner started bubbling up and uh, softening before it started getting more transparent. So that part's gone. And when I tried to sand a part beforehand, yes, it ultimately did get a bit clearer, I think, after I heated the surface that was sanded to 1200 grit. But again, it's really hard to find that optimum spot where the plastic neither bubbles nor softens too much. But one nice thing you can do with heat, actually, for any filament, is to melt off these little hairs that PTG in particular likes to pull when the hot end moves from one area to the next. High heat and a single pass are usually enough to take care of them. And one last approach that didn't really work with the Benchy was the thicker layers at 300 micron. Even with the extrusion multiplier cranked up, it did not turn out transparent at all. Though print quality overall was a bit more consistent compared to the low layer height parts. So to recap with solid prints, with polyester filament use a low layer height, 100% infill obviously, and tune the extrusion multiplier so that you're getting maybe a tiny bit of over extrusion. Higher temperatures can help, but it's really easy to cook your filament that way. Post-processing prints to improve the surface is hard to do right, at least with heat. Maybe those thick coatings can help here. I've played around with spray-on clear coats before, but they didn't improve things at all. Awesome, let's check out how these parts are printed. These are all single wall parts. Most of these you could print with vase mode, uh, which is a print mode that turns the entire print into one long extrusion line. Instead of having discrete layers, it just continuously keeps moving the hot end up as it lays down plastic, so it's, it's one long spiral. However, this shroud does have a ridge up here, which usually can't be printed cleanly with a vase mode. But that's not the point here. Let's start out with what makes these parts look better or worse than others. And essentially it's the same thing again. It's refraction, wherever light transitions from one medium into another. And here that's from the air into the plastic and back out. The layers act as tiny lenses because they have that round section on their end. That's why this part right here will blur things in the vertical direction, but not as much horizontally. For example, with uh, this shroud, I tried to use that effect and create tiny micro lenses that would also diffuse light horizontally, because that is supposed to be a diffuser for a lamp. You know, you have these individual LEDs and just seeing each one through a clear shroud doesn't make for a very attractive lighting setup. So I have all these parts that create different diffusion patterns. Most of these were printed with 300 micron layers, because if you compare to the one printed at 100 micron, they are just so much clearer and crisper and less hazy white. Of course, using thick layers and only a thin shell like this means that these parts print incredibly quickly and use only very little material. This one was printed with just 25 grams of PTG in 45 minutes. That's hard to beat. 
But I can tell you one thing that doesn't work, and that is leaving the printer at over 600% speed for the wrong file. I mean, it did get the print done super fast, but clearly it's not quite what I wanted. But back to this. Uh, this little one I printed with a thicker extrusion width. So typically with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, you're going to set it to lay down like 0.42 millimeter wide tracks. Here I went with a full millimeter, so two and a half times as wide as the nozzle. And while it's not the greatest thing to do if you want overhangs and details to come out great, I mean, you should be using a thicker nozzle, this part still came out looking great. It's not quite as clear if that's the right word, but that might be due to the structure too. It's definitely better than using two individual perimeters, which would introduce that second interface where you'd potentially end up with more diffraction. Also, it's, it's very strong and stiff as expected, but I did crack the bottom trying to remove it from the PEI bed. PETG, as usual, likes to stick to PEI a bit too much. So usually I'd recommend using a liquid surface finish on top of the PEI that doesn't stick quite as much to so something like Printerfix, Magigoo, or maybe glue stick if you can apply it evenly. But this technique of just using a single wall isn't great for every model. This Adelinda frog does come out really nice looking with those thick layers, but wherever there's a slope on the surface, the extrusion lines just get super droopy, like on the back, near the tail, or on the wings right there. Um, I did configure this print with two solid layers on top and bottom and turned off any feature that would backfill surfaces, which would avoid those exact artifacts, but it would also create these structures on the inside that just don't look great if you see the way they diffract light shining through it. Alternatively, you could print it with a solid infill and thin layers, but that would use up a lot of material and take a long, long time to print. So that's how I printed these transparent slash translucent parts. I think they came out great, especially these single wall prints. They're going to look awesome installed somewhere with some light inside them. If you learned something today, click that thumbs up, get subscribed if you aren't already, and whether you freshly subscribed or have been for a year or two, check that you have that bell toggled so that YouTube sends you notifications as soon as a new video gets uploaded. Kickbacks from affiliate links help me run this channel, so if you want to try printing some clear stuff too, there is a link to Colorfab's HT material in the video description that will take you to the appropriate shop for your region. Also to Dust Filament, PTG, that's not an affiliate link, I just like the material, it's cheap, it's consistently prints well, what more could you want? Well, maybe cheap shipping outside the European Union. If you want to directly support what I'm doing here, head over to Patreon to chip in a dollar or two per month, or more, I'm not going to judge. Uh, that is always appreciated and you'll be invited to join an exclusive live Q&A hangout as well. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.